Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case that was referred to me for a dislocated IOL. This patient had a dislocated toric lens that was descending out of the bag, and the patient also had vitreous in the anterior chamber. And so the question is, what should I do? Should I exchange this lens, reposition the lens? Should I do Yamani technique, do a sulcus placed lens, or something alternatively? So there are a few observations. This is a Technus JNJ ZCT225 toric IOL. This patient had a diopter and a half of astigmatism. And you can see that the lens is dislocated nasally. And I don't know what's going on here, but there's a posterior capsule YAG opening, but the lens is dislocated nasally. I'm suspecting that there's a peripheral defect in the posterior capsule here. And there's a lot of vitreous in the anterior chamber. So I go ahead and make my mark for my sclerotomy, which is about four millimeters posterior to the limbus. This is my pars plana trocar placement. I'm going in tangentially with the needle. I puncture through and then I rotate and then go straight down towards the nerve. And that's the placement of the trocar. I'm going to make my peristentesis incisions. I'm going to have to widen the incisions because I'm going to be using a 23 gauge anterior chamber infusion cannula, as well as my vitrector is about 23 gauge. And so I need to make sure I make those incisions a little bit wider than normal. So as you can see, I'm making three peristentesis incisions, and I'm hoping that I can reposition this lens rather than explanting the lens. You can see the infusion cannula has a bevel. It actually, this is a nice tip. I like to go bevel down. So I'm turning the cannula actually upside down. Bevel down makes it go through the corneal incision so much more easily without actually potentially traumatizing the corneal epithelium. So I start the vitrectomy. You can see all that vitreous in the anterior chamber starts coming out very quickly. The vitreous in the anterior chamber is more opacified. You can see the fibers a lot easier. So as I'm doing the anterior vitrectomy setting, it's high cut rate with high vacuum. I'm sweeping with the cannula right over the vitrectomy port just to help facilitate any vitreous removal in the anterior chamber. This rexus is somewhat small, and so I should be able to sweep around and making sure that the vitreous is removed from the anterior chamber. There are a few fine fibers at the level of the infusion cannula, and so I'm trying to do the vitrectomy in that area. I pull the cannula out to facilitate removal of the vitreous in that area. So this is where the rexus is. It's a little bit smaller than that, and I'm hoping because the rexus is intact, that the anterior capsule is intact, the zonules are intact, and so my assumption is that I'm hoping to reverse optic capture this lens, assuming there's strong enough zonules and strong enough anterior capsule. At this point, I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic in the anterior chamber to fill the bag and just to coat the corneal endothelium. And then this is my IOL holder. It's got serrated teeth, and it's gonna be important because I'm gonna to try to reverse optic capture this lens. I'm using this Maltzman instrument, which helps me stretch the capsule. But what happens is when I do that, it causes the IOL to be pushed downward. And you want to be very careful because I'm stretching the anterior capsule. I don't want to accidentally tear the capsule. Because once I do that, I'm pretty much in trouble and I'd have to abandon doing this maneuver. So I'm very carefully stretching the anterior capsule, trying to get that optic upward. And when you think of it from that standpoint, when I'm holding the lens from the other side, it's going to be very difficult to be able to rotate that lens up. I switched to the Sinsky thinking I could pop up the lens a little bit easier with it, but the Sinsky is a little bit too short and this lens is fairly slippery. And so you can see I'm, I was trying to bend the lens a little bit upward. And so this is my third attempt using the Maltzman. I try on the far side first and then I go proximal. I get around the capsular opening, the anterior capsule opening, and then with the tooth of the Maltzman, I'm able to lift edge of the lens. Thankfully, 
because this is a hydrophobic acrylic material, I'm able to bend the lens quite nicely upward. And so this is a maneuver. I get around the anterior capsulorexis edge. I lift the optic above the anterior capsulorexis edge. Obviously, the part of the lens that I'm holding is above the anterior capsule. I use a Maltzman to turn the other side up and then I'm able to release and now I have full reverse optic capture. And so you have a better idea. The red is the posterior capsule rupture area. And right here in blue is the reverse optic capture. Again, I place the infusion cannula through my limbal incision bevel down, and then I rotate in. This goes in really much easier this way. I do a little bit of pars plane of vitrectomy. and then I'm doing some anterior vitrectomy. So I record the vitrectomy part here in 2X just to speed up the time, but I still want you to appreciate the extensive time that I'm spending removing the vitreous, making sure I'm doing a good vitrectomy. Even though I don't see any vitreous, I'm still doing the vitrectomy just to make sure that there is no fine wisps that I don't see. And then once I do the vitrectomy for quite a bit of time, I'm actually going to switch to the IA cut mode. And this is really just my viscoelastic removal step. And so with this, you just have to pulse. The IA cut mode actually has a higher aspiration flow rate. And so if you're aggressive, you can actually cause a chamber to collapse. And then when you see the chamber start to collapse, you stop, allow the eye to inflate, and then go back and start to activate the aspiration to remove the viscoelastic. And so once I have all the dispersive viscoelastic out of the anterior chamber, I switch to the anterior vitrectomy mode and I go back parse plana. Again, I'm trying to be very thorough to remove all the vitreous, make sure there's no potential strands. I come out with the vitrector and then I come out with the anterior chamber infusion cannula. And then I hydrate my incisions and then I'm going to take the trocar cannula out and massage the eye. And I have a really nice self-sealed sclerotomy as well as my incision. So this, again, is a patient with a dislocated IOL. I had to first decipher why the lens dislocated. Is the capsular bag intact? I had a good anterior rexus opening. It was a little bit small, but I thought I could take advantage of it. The zonules were strong. The anterior capsule rim was strong. So I felt like rather than throwing the baby out with the bathwater and losing the touristy of this lens, which this patient has enjoyed for many years, I decided to do reverse optic capture. This was quite a challenging reverse optic capture because it was such a small rexus. But thankfully, this patient was able to see 2020 post-op day one without correction. He had a very well-centered lens and the patient was elated that he didn't have to have an exchange, he didn't have to have a Yamane, he didn't have to have a sulcus lens exchange, and then have to do some refractive surgery on the back end to help him get his astigmatism under control. So this was a really simple way to do a reverse optic capture of a dislocated toric lens. And of course, at the end of every case, I like to inject some lidocaine subconjunctivally, as well as ANSEF when I do a vitrectomy. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.